Well, let me also ask you about something that you found, especially recently appealing, which is Roger Penrose's twister theory. Um, what is it? What kind of questions might it allow us to answer? What will the answers look like? It's only in the last couple of years that I really, really kind of come to really, I think, to appreciate it and to see how to really, what I, I believe, to see how to really do something with it. And I've gotten very excited about that the last year or two. I mean, w- one way of saying one idea of twister theory is that what it's, it, it's, it's a different way of thinking about what space and time are and about what points in space and time are, and f- but, but which only, which is very interesting that it only really works in four dimensions. So four dimensions behaves very, very specially, unlike other dimensions. And in four dimensions, there's certain, there is a way of thinking about space and time geometry where, you know, as well as just thinking about points in space and time, you can also um, th- think about different objects, these so-called twisters. And, and then when, when you do that, you, you end up with a um, kind of a really interesting insight that the um, that you can formulate a theory and you can formulate a very, take a standard th- theory that we formulate in terms of points of space and time, and you can reformulate in this twister language. And in this twister language, it's the, um, the, f- the fundamental objects are actually are more kind of the, are, are actually spheres in some sense, kind of the light cone. So maybe one way to say it, which which actually I, I think is is really is is quite amazing, is if you ask yourself, you know, what do we know about about the world? We have this idea that the world out there is this all these different points and these points of time. Well, that's kind of a derived quantity. What we really really know about the world is when we we open our eyes, what do you see? You, you see a sphere. And you, and that what you're looking at is you're looking at the you know a, a sphere is worth of light rays coming into your, into your eyes, and what Penrose says is that, well, what what a point in space time is is that sphere, that sphere of all the light rays coming in, and and he says and you should formulate your um instead of thinking about points you should think about the space of those spheres if you like, and formulate the degrees of freedom as physics as living on those spheres. Living on so you're kind of you're kind of living on your degrees of freedom are living on light rays, not on points, and it's a very different way of thinking about um about about physics. And you know he and others working with him developed a you know a beautiful mathematical this beautiful mathematical formalism and a way to go back and forth between our kind of some aspects of our standard way we write these things down and work in the so-called twister space. And you know they. Certain things worked out very well, but they ended up, you know, I think kind of stuck by the 80s or 90s that they weren't, <laughs> a little bit like string theory, that they, they um, by using these ideas about twisters, they could develop them in different directions and find all sorts of other interesting things, but they were, they were getting, they weren't finding any way of doing that that brought them back to kind of new insights into physics. And um, my own, I mean, what's kind of gotten me excited really is, is what I think I have an an idea about that I think does actually does actually work that, that goes more in that direction, and um, I can can go on about that endlessly or talk a little bit about it. But that's the um, I, I think that, that that's the the one kind of easy to explain insight about twister theory. There are some more technical ones. I should I mean I think it's also very conv- convincing what it tells you about spinners, for instance. But that's a more technical. Well, first let's like linger on the spheres and the light cones. You're saying twisted theory allows you to make that the fundamental object with which you're operating. Yeah. With. How that, I mean, first of all, like philosophically, that's weird <laughs> and beautiful. Maybe because it maps, it feels like it moves us so much closer to the way human brains perceive reality. Yeah. So, so it's almost like um, it, <laughs> our perception is like the the content of our perception is the fundamental object of reality that's yeah. very appealing yeah <laughs> uh, is it mathematically powerful is there something you can say can you say a little bit more about what the heck that even means uh for because you, you, it's much easier to think about mathematically like a point in space time like what does it mean to be operating on the light cone it uses a kind of mathematics that's relative that you know what was kind of goes back to the nineteenth century among mathematicians. It's not um, 
Anyway, it, it's a bit of a long story, but the one problem is that you have to start, it's crucial that you think in terms of complex numbers and not just real numbers. And this, for most people, that makes it harder to, for mathematicians, that's fine, we love doing that. But for m most people, that makes it harder to think about 